pressured by the Spanish authorities as well as by his family and friends to leave the country and avoid further persecution. Rizal left Manila for Hong Kong. So while in Hong Kong, Rizal decided to go to Macau. Rizal visited the theater, casino, cathedral, and churches, botanical garden, and he also saw the famous Grotto of the Camorans. And on February 20, 1888, Rizal returned to Hong Kong. Rizal's travel to Japan. On February 28, 1888, Rizal arrived in Yokohama. Juan Perez Caballero, Secretary of Spanish Legation, and he invited Rizal to live at Spanish Legation. Rizal accepted the invitation. First, he could economize his living expenses by staying at the Legation. And second, he had nothing to hide from prying eyes of the Spanish authority. Rizal started working at the Spanish Legation in February 1888. Seiko caught his eye one afternoon while she was walking in the garden, and Rizal found out from a gardener who she was. Given that Seiko spoke both English and French, she and Rizal managed to strike up a friendship and eventually a relationship, and she taught him Japanese as well. Dates were spent exploring parks, shrines, and museums such as the Imperial Art Gallery. Osaisen's beauty and affection almost tempted Rizal to settle down in Japan. His sojourn in Japan for 45 days was one of the happiest interlude in his life. Rizal boarded the English vessel Belgic on April 18, 1888. He reached San Francisco on April 28, 1888. Dub America as a motherland for the poor who wish to work. Rizal also described America as a great country, but it has many defects too. They do not have real civil liberty. When he was asked by Jose Alejandro and his impression of the country, he stated, America is the land par excellence of freedom, but only for the whites. They experienced discrimination in America upon arrival, for they weren't allowed to disembark. Chinese passengers were even quarantined much longer on board. Rizal arrived in New York on May 13, 1888. He called New York the Big Town. Rizal has a positive and negative impression about America. The positive? First, America is a land of great opportunity, especially for immigrants. Second, it has huge forms, farms rather, and factories. The third, it has natural beauty. And the last one, it has a high standard of living. While in the negative, Rizal complained about racial prejudice of the American, which has inconsistent with its principles of liberty, freedom, and democracy. First, colored man cannot marry a white man. Second, or the last one, there where hatred against the Chinese America is the land for excellence of freedom, but only for whites. Rizal left New York on May 16, 1888 and arrived in Liverpool on May 24, 1888 and stayed there for a day before moving to London where he stayed as a guest 
in the house of Antonio Maria Rigidor. 1880 to 1890, he shuttled between London and Paris, where he wrote ethnographic and history related studies as well as political articles. He also frequently visited Spain, where he met with fellow Filipino intellectual likes. Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Mariano Ponce, and Graciano Lopez Hena. He read and annotate the Morgas Sucesos de Las Islas Filipinas and rare historical works in the Philippines. And on May 1888 to March 1889, Rizal immersed deeply in his historical studies in London, and in 1889, he published his annotated edition of Morgas Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas. During this time, Rizal had a romantic interlude with Gertrude Beckett. She fell in love with Rizal. Rizal, being a man of normal emotions, found joy in Gertrude's company. He called her Getty, and he called her Getty, and she called Rizal. Petty. He could not marry Getty for for he had mission to fulfill in life and decided to go away so that Getty may forget him. Brussels, Belgium. So what are the activities in Brussels? Dr. Jose Rizal continued to write El Filibusterismo. He also continued contributing for La Solaridad under the pseudonyms of De Masala and La Oblaan. So, uh, life in Brussels, uh, Rizal was accompanied by Jose Albert when he moved to Brussels. So they live in a modest boarding. Rizal was the first to advocate the Filipinization of its orthography. Sobre la nueva ortografía de la lengua tagala, or also the new orthography of the Tagalog language. It was published in La Solaridad on April 15, 1890. So in this article, he laid down the rules of the new Tagalog orthography and with modesty and sincerity. So he gave credit for the adoption of this new orthography to Dr. Trinidad Padro de Tavera, the author of the celebrated work El Sanscrito en la Lengua Tagala or in Tagalog language, Sanskrit, which was published in Paris in 1884. So, uh, uh, I was one... Madrid, Spain. The Mess Adventures in Madrid. First, he sought the help of the Filipino colony. He called uh, on Senior Fabe, ministers of colonists, in order to protest the injustice committed by the General Valeriano Wheeler and the Dominicans against the Calamba Fox, but nothing came out. And second, Jose Panganiba and his friend died in Barcelona, and Rizal deeply mourned. And third, he challenged Antonio Luna and Wenceslao in a duel for and fidelity of Lino Rivera. He received a letter from Leonor announcing her coming marriage to an Englishman and asking his forgiveness. And fifth, rivalry of Rizal and Del Pilar supremacy, election of the responsible who will, who will direct the affair of the Filipino community. Rizal won the two-thirds, but he declined the positions. He did not release being a leader of divided people. On March 29, 1891, Rizal finished writing the manuscript of El Filibusterismo, which he started on writing in Calamba, 1887. On March 30, 1891, he went to Paris and stayed at the home of Valentin Ventura. And on April 1891, from Paris, he went back to Brussels. He retired from the propaganda movement and stopped writing for La Solidaridad. Jan 
Belgium El Pilibos Turismo Ventura Savior of El Philly Rizal a similar calamity that he experienced in Berlin when everything seems lost help came from Valentin Ventura in Paris with his financial aid the printing of El Philly was resumed September 18, 1891 the El Philly came of the fresh he sent copies to Basa and Secto Lopez Rizal donated the original manuscript to Valentin Ventura El Philly was dedicated to Gomborza. Before Christmas of 1891, Rizal's family arrived in Hong Kong. So, in Christmas of 1891 was one of the happiest celebrations in Rizal's life. He practiced medicine to earn a living for himself and also for his family. Rizal then conceived the establishment of Filipino colony in North Borneo. He planned to move the landless Filipino families from Kalamba. Rizal celebrated his 31st birthday in Hong Kong also. So in June 21, 1892, he penned a letter in Hong Kong for Governor General Despu Hall. In this letter, he informed the Governor General of his coming to Manila and placed himself under the protection of the Spanish government. Rizal and Lucia left Hong Kong to Manila. They carried safe conduct issued by the Spanish Consul General in Hong Kong. Same day, a secret case was filed in Manila against Rizal for anti-religious and anti-patriotic aviation. This book is called No Limitangiri or The Social Cancer. So, The Social Cancer, the alternate title is No Limitangiri or Touch Me Not. Touch Me Not. Originally published in Spanish in 1887, No Limitangiri or The Touch Me Not is the satirical um, fiction novel written by the Filipino author and national hero Jose Rizal. Set in the Philippines, the story follows Juan Chrysostomo Ibarra, a mestizo who ventures to revisit his past and watch history play out before his eyes. The novel was written during the colonization of the Philippines by Spain and is seen as a public rebuke of the oppressive ruling government and injustice of the Catholic priests. Now, more commonly published in the Tagalog or English language, the novel is the first in a trilogy of books, followed by El Pilibusterismo and the unfinished Maki Mesa. No Limit Hungary and its two sequels have become the national effect of the Philippines as well as required reading for school students throughout the country. The title refers to the Latin phrase spoken by Jesus to Mary Magdalene upon his resurrection. Rizal inspired and get the idea of writing of his great novel by the book of Harriet Beecher Stowe entitled the Uncle Tom's Cabin. It portrays the brutality of American slave owners to the unfortunate Negro slave. So, inspired Rizal to prepare a novel that would affect or defect the miseries of his people under the sla of Spanish tyranny. The story begins in the Philippines. Captain Chago, a wealthy socialite, holds a dinner party to welcome Juan Crisostomo Ibarra back to the Philippines. Ibarra, a native mestizo, has spent the past seven years studying in Europe. 
during dinner, Ibarra learns his father, Don Rafael, died recently of unknown causes. Ibarra is berated by Friar Father Damaso for learning abroad what he could have learned at home. Ibarra holds his tongue and leaves the party to visit his fiancée, Maria Clara, Chagos' daughter. En route, Ibarra chats with civil guard Senor Guevara, who explains that Rafael died in jail after being imprisoned for accidentally killing a tax collector who was abusing a boy in the street. Ibarra travels to his hometown, San Diego, accompanied by Clara. A large All Soul Slave Festival is held commemorating Purgatorial Souls. Ibarra learns from a schoolmaster of Father Damaso's curricular middling. Damaso insists on teachers beating children as a discipline and advanced teaching of Spanish in favor of the native Philippine language. Tagalog as an alternative Ibarra plans that to build a circular school like the one Rafael always wished for Ibarra consult with the church and government officials. Fully intending to ignore their influence once the school's built, Ibarra visits the Catholic cemetery and learns Damaso had Rafael body extruded which has since be, been dumped in a lake during the fiesta. Ibarra and local officials celebrate the opening of the new school as Damaso blesses the building with a simon. The mysterious Elias arrives. So Ibarra that the that the others plans to kill, Ibarra once saved Ilya's life. During a fishing expedition, Ilyas informs Ibarra that the others plan to kill Ibarra during the school christening. And Ibarra disbelieves, but when a large boulder comes rolling, a him as Ilyas suggested Elias shows the man responsible in the way the man dies, saving Ibarra's life. So the festival continues, but Ibarra is not aware of his foes. At the dinner celebration held by Ibarra that night, Damaso arrives uninvited and begins insulting the new school spouting racial insults to Filipinos as Indios, and besmirches Rafael's death. The latter remark prompts Ibarra to attack Damaso, raise a knife to him, and tell everyone that Damaso exhumed Rafael's corpse. Ibarra nearly kills Damaso, but Clara stops the blade before it stops him. Afterwards, Ibarra is excommunicated. Chago cancels the wedding of Ibarra and Clara and withdraws his daughter to the Spaniards Liniers. The Captain Generals visit San Diego from Spain and is begged to punish Ibarra since the General supports Ibarra's school's project. He refuses punishment and leaves the excommunication. Father Salve hires Lucas, brother of the deceased man who meant to kill Ibarra with the boulder, to frame Ibarra. Salve is in love with Clara and orchestrates an attack on the military barracks that he blames on Ibarra. Salve intends to take credit for saving the town from the attack he secretly started. Following the siege, Ibarra is arrested as black. He is jailed and found guilty based on a vague letter he wrote to Clara. Elias returns and bots Ibarra out of prison and they escape on boat. 
before fleeing town, Ibarra climbs onto Clara's patio and bids adieu. Clara explained that she was blackmailed into releasing the letter, which led to Ibarra's imprisonment. A man told Clara that her real father is Damaso, not Tiago. Clara relinquished the letter in order to keep this secret from Tiago. And to honor her deceased mother, Clara expressed deep regret for her betrayed and reinforced her undying love for Ibarra. Ibarra and Elias bid farewell and begin rowing into the night. As they travel, they debate the merits of revolution and whether a change within this system is better than outright overthrowing it. During their discussion, the men are attacked by another boat. As a distraction, Elias decides to leave off the boat while Ibarra continues rowing. Elias tells Ibarra to meet him on Christmas Eve in San Diego, where Ibarra's grandfather is buried with his family fortune. Elias dives into the water and chased by the boat until the attackers spot blood in the water assume Elias dead. In San Diego, Clara tells Damaso she cannot marry Linares because she's not in love with him. Clara cites a newspaper falsely claiming Ibarra's death as the reason she no longer wishes to live and joins a convent as a result. On Christmas Eve, Elias appears in the wood to meet Ibarra, who never shows up. Elias wondered and tells the young Basilio that he is about to die. Elias asks Basilio to burn his corpse along with Basilio's mother, Sisa, on a pyre. As Elia Elias looks up to the sky, Dying, he utters, I die without seeing dawn's light shining on my country. You who will see it, welcome it for me. Don't forget those who fell during the night. Ibarra's fate remains a mystery. In the novel's dedication, Rizal explains that there was once a type of cancer so terrible that the sufferer could not bear to be touched and the disease was thus called no limitangere or do not touch me. He believed that his homeland was simil similarly afflicted. The novel offers both a panoramic view of every level of society in the Philippines of the time and droll satire. Its description of the cruelty of Spanish rule was a catalyst from the movement for independence in the country. It later came to be regarded as a classic of Philippine literature, though it is more frequently read in English or Tagalog translation than its original Spanish.